Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJBW Poodles Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the Moist Princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? <laughs> oh, I, God. I, I, oh, I said God. it. Oh, yowzers. Oh, God. Okay, well, we're starting off the episode that way. Okay. Yep. Okay. I, I can do <laughs> Okay, whew, I am doing great. Hey, Andre. I am sorry today. It was a bad day. I tried some new stuff I showed you before coming on here. You were like, no freaking way. And I was like, yes way. Mm-hmm. We do that no shit. Way. No freaking way. It, it's surprisingly easy when you have a lighter weight on obvious. Just got to show Rich King. He'll He'll fully endorse it. He'll be like, yeah, do it. You're doing it now. <laughs> Yeah. I had a good back day. I watched some great wrestling. I had some chili for dinner. It was fantastic. How are you doing, my friend? Chili, 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 chili. I'm doing good. Uh, worked today, uh, came home, ate food, and now I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm repping my good friend Mia Marchino. I'm repping, I'm repping Zach Saber Jr. I bet you are. <laughs> I bet you are. Oh, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> we are here to talk the G1 Climax 34 finals, baby. It all comes down to this Zack Saber Jr. versus Mel's pick, Yoda Suji. We picked, we both picked this final. How we were both this, this big of geniuses, I don't understand. It just, it's. It's kind of natural to us, isn't it? You know, that's what happens when you hang out with a natural. You, you become a natural good guesser, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, this was my final, and I am not disappointed by it. I thought Yoda Suji he was going to run the table in this tournament and get like, have that undefeated streak going all the way to the finals and then lose. But that was my that was my prediction. For this year, mm-hmm. Mel's was predicting him to win it, and I don't know why, but rude. Because think about the marketability. Think of the marketability yeah. that you can sit there and say that you have uh, someone who came back from excursion, won the G- the um, New Japan Cup, won the G One, is like you know that that's a, that's a very credible person to have on top of your company. You know, I thought they could tell a really, really great story with that, too. And you know, I love my stories. Yeah, just like an old lady. You love your stories. <laughs> I love hearing them, not telling them. No, like they love sitting down and watching their stories. Do they? My mom does. Her, watches her like Young and the Restless and <laughs> Coronation Street. It's It's her stories. <laughs> She is over the age of 65. I can call her old now. It's, it's okay. Oh, poor Mama C. Well, it's, poor it's, Mama it's, C. It's, 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 it's true, though. I mean, if done properly, though, we could debate that wrestling is essentially a violent soap opera. Oh, 100%. It, 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 is, it is the most violent soap opera there is, other than, yeah, it's the most violent soap opera there is. Sometimes I wish people settled their differences in real life like they did in wrestling. Oh, just just when two guys got a beef at work, they they have to like wrestle and somebody has to hit like a Set hurricane run off. They have to hit they have to hit a hurricane run off the top shell off the top of the like the scaffolding. Sure, Jeff Hardy, go on with your bad self. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll take other things. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, we're not we're here gonna, to talk about beefs. We're here to talk about big beefy people. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you guys. Uh, if you're listening on A Plus Production, thank you so very much for listening to us in audio form. Please go to the Facebook page, like the Facebook page, uh, subscribe to us on the uh, podcast feeds. We would really appreciate it. 
And uh, if you are watching us on video, whether it's Andre Melbourne's talk, whether it's a back regular video, thank you so very, very, very much. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, share us out to your friends, family, and uh, just all the great people in your life. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that word is going to trigger some people but I, I i know it's making you laugh because of earlier i mean it's making me laugh because our friend cat and my friend Alyssa, she's she, they're gonna hear this and be like oh no we use that to describe something very different <laughs> and you need to describe you working out so it's because i was sweaty but i wasn't really sweaty it was the first word that came to my mind Let's yeah. get into it. Let's talk some G134 finals. Please. We're gonna get to, we're gonna talk to the car. We're gonna quickly go through all the undercard matches. We've got a couple that we want to highlight with some stuff that happened. That's setting up the future in of professional wrestling in New Japan. Yeah. And then we're gonna Eww. talk the finals. And we're gonna talk all the stuff that came out of it over the last couple of days. And all the announcements mm-hmm. of the fall and all the awesomeness that is coming in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Awesome. It kicked off. It kicked off Sho Makato, Tiger Mask, and Yuji Nagata versus Tenkoji, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and Satoshi Kojima, and Ryusuke Taguchi. Again, I said this last time that Satoshi Kojima was here. Why does he have the MLW tag title and not the MLW world title? Why did um, Blake Christian have the title stripped of him when he was in the middle of a tournament? Like, wrestling doesn't make sense. No. It it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Not at all. Not at all. So, yeah. Tiger Mask getting some good good, good offense against uh, Kojima here, the junior heavyweight against. He actually hit a Tiger Bomb to Kojima in this match. Yeah. Uh, Kojima getting... Kojima gets a beautiful Koji cutter in here. I was like, yeah, Koji cutter. Let's go, mm-hmm. baby. Um, yeah. uh, Shobakato getting that Boston Crab on Taguchi, but Tenzon hits him with Mongolian chops to break it up. Taguchi gets a Boston Crab, but Tiger Mask breaks that up, but he ends up getting sent out of the ring by the funky weapon. Uh, Taguchi gets the ankle lock, uh, and then he decides to Drops some elbows on the ankle and then hits, gets, puts the ankle lock back on with, with great vining the legs. And Shoma Kato is forced to tap out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shoma Kato also very sassy. Beginning of this one, demanding tens on start with him. Also, found that very interesting. Uh, Tenzon kicked the holy heck and piss out of him too for that first little bit. It's great. Mm-hmm. I'm a little worried about Tenzon. Looking a, looking a little, I hate to say it, he's looking a little older. He's Boy. not looking like the last time we saw him. And I know people age, it's just, it's sad well, when I see I, it. I thought he looked this way the last time we saw him because he still looked kind of like he, he thinned looks, out and older. <laughs> yeah, he's he's looking thinner. He's looking a little grayer. You know, it's an nostalgic to watch these wrestlers kind of come into their twilight time too. Um, but I, I it, it made me a little a little wispy. But holy heck and crap, did we see the size of Kojima's arms? Mm-hmm. Those things are massive. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked, um, I mean, Tagichi always does tend to use the Boston crab, but I don't feel like he brings it out a lot unless he is fighting a young lion. And I feel in this respect, it was kind of like he went to the basic to try to maybe put the little guy, put Shoma through the the ringer kind of thing, ended up going back to the tried and true ankle lock that he goes to perfection. So good. It was a great opener. He was. Fun six man getting to see Kojima, getting to see Tenkoji, mm-hmm. getting to see the funky Tenkoji working together. Yeah, the funky mm-hmm. Tenkoji, you know? <laughs> I also have to say I love Taguchi's just perpetual, what's the word, Anti- antagonization of anybody. 
and everybody at any given time. His yep. new merchandise, the Los Ingubernables de Teguchi, or is it Los Teguchi de Japón? So what did, I didn't write down. What I, think the Los, I think it's Los Teguchi de Japón. I don't I think he uses Ingubernable in there. No, no, because no, that would definitely be, I mean, but like, I just, I love it because it's still a rib. He could have worn any shirt that he has in his merchandise, and he loves to just pick that rib on Naito. I love it. <laughs> Poking the bear, if 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 that was a personification <laughs> of a bear, that yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we move on to a singles contest. It is Saichi versus Katsuya Murashima. Um, mm -hmm. and really showing great fire in here. I really think, like, especially working with a vet uh, of Taichi's level, um, mm -hmm. Taichi getting that single leg crab, but not fully stepping over, doing kind of that lion tamer variation and like mm -hmm. st stomping on the head of Murashima at points. Yeah. Um, yeah, really, I really liked him doing it there. Um, Murashima getting the scoop slam and the boss crab, but Taichi does get to the ropes. The end of this match comes huge axe bomber. Uh, dropping Murashima for two. Taiji hits a head kick into the dangerous backdrop for the win. Then just immediately rolls out and just leaves to the back. Like he did not even celebrate. He literally like got the pin, rolled out, and left. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That gave me a little flashbacks to. Do you remember when Okada did that? Against Yuya Uemura before his excursion. So what you're saying is Murashima is about to leave, even though he just he just got here. Even though he just no, got here. No, 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 no. But um, it, it's something that these guys like to tell a story with. We were tell they were telling the story there that Okada was frustrated with Yuya, and and Yuya was going through a frustrating period at that time too as a young lion, picking up a lot of losses, both in tags and in singles against his other young lion brethren, brethren and against you know singles competitions, sort of like this. So it, I like the story that it tells. Because I felt throughout the match that there was a sense of I don't want to, I don't think superiority is the right word because I don't feel Tai Chi's that kind of attitude, but there was definitely a this is beneath me kind of attitude mm. for me emulating off of Tai Chi in this, which is not something we're typically accustomed to, or at least I don't feel that we are. Um, he tends to be a bit more of a facey character now that he is with just five guys and and sonata constantly coming in and out through the crowd um so yeah i found it very interesting this match felt very um i don't want to say completely different but it felt like we were seeing a different version of tai chi in this match against Murashima. And I don't feel that it's going to be something that's going to be a detriment or negative. I think it's actually um, a positive meant to kind of bolster Murashima a little bit hmm. and maybe fight for a second match with Tai Chi in which he can maybe get some more um, respect out of him at the end. Very possible. Very yeah. possible. So we move on. Tag team match. It is one half of the IWGP World Tag Team Champions. Mikey Nichols teaming up with the soul of PWA champion from Australia, Robbie Eagles. TMDK taking on the United Empire's Francesco Akira and AEW's Kanosuke Takeshita. Uh, they did the little bit of clear uh they say eagles has faced akira five times in tag team action has never had a win over him is what i heard on commentary yeah uh eagles hitting this beautiful tope con hilo to the catch on the floor and literally goes like lands on him and like ends up landing over on the other side of the barricade on the tables after he hit him i was like oh shit yeah little 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 um what's the word what am I trying to say? Why did it leave as soon as ADHD? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it just floats in one ear and you don't get it out. Like right then it's gone. 
I know, it I know the feeling. Weird. I know the feeling. <laughs> uh, Takeshi at one point launches Eagles across the ring, and Akira comes up with a running drop kick to send Eagles out of the ring. Just great, some great tag team stuff here in this match from non traditional tag teams. Uh, Team mm-hmm. DK hitting this double foot stomp Death Valley driver combo. Uh, that uh, they and even the Sun Comedy, they've been working on that for a couple, couple days now, getting ready for this. So I was like, all right, all right, cool, cool. Um, Takesh, Takesh hits a blue thunder bomb, then rolls out of the way as Akira hits as Akira grabs uh Eagles for speed fire for two. The end of this match comes, Nickel hits Akira with a big ending, and Robbie hits a shining wizard for the win. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, I was a little disappointed that um, United Empire didn't pick up a win on this one. When I say United Empire, like, Takeshka and Akira worked surprisingly well. Too. Like, I know they've been off and on throughout the tour teaming with United Empire. But this combination of the, the super tall um, Takeshka and the power and a different kind of moves that he brought in versus that speed agility and just whoopity whoopitiness of francesco akira it was a really really good combination it worked really well and same could be said with with nichols and robbie i mean the size differential between those two was not as crazy but they aren't as you mentioned a traditional tag team that we see even with TMDK, mm. but they they know each other well enough. They've trained it well enough, and they've been together well enough that they worked surprisingly well together too. This was a really really fun tag match. I didn't take any notes. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I had a lot. I took like I took five notes for this entire match. The match was only about just under ten minutes, but I took five mm. notes and then the commentary note. But and mm. just I, I I thought these two teams worked so well together here. They yeah. just everything flowed so well, and it, again, it was that big power guy mixed with the small, speedy, uh, flying dude. That's what it was. The and heavy really and the junior. It. Yeah, very much so. And I love it too because then you end up with the combinations of the two. Sometimes it was Nichols versus Akira and Takeshka versus Eagles. Sometimes it was the the juniors versus the juniors and the heavies versus the heavies. It was so good. I very much enjoyed this. Uh, so we move on. It is the Bullet Club. Clark Connors, Drilla Maloney, and Tai Ishimori. And it is the Bullet Club here because because Ishimori is not a war dog technically. So this is just Bullet Club teaming up. Uh, taking Even though he's a little scrappy little chihuahua, uh, he is not a war dog. He's just a regular dog. <laughs> I mean, maybe they could, like, level him up to, like, legendary status, and then he could reach, like, level 99. Maybe. He could reach war dog status, maybe. I don't know. They, they take on the team of just five guys. Doki, Sonata, and Takamichi Noku. And I went, holy crap, you have the heavy former heavyweight champion in this match with against going up against three juniors. I thought the same thing when I looked at this. I was like, you got three juniors against two juniors and a heavyweight. Mm-hmm. That's Drilla, a odd, though. But... Drilla, though, he, I think he floats between because that man is huge. And holy crap, is he tanned. We discussed this before. <laughs> the, rough, the man is naturally, a, he's not white. and He has a darker skin tone. But mm-hmm. he was much much, much darker than normal. Would you say he was Tiger Mask? I would say he was <laughs> Tiger Mask plus Hamna put together. <laughs> what a shade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lordy. Um, but arguably, though, I mean, Clark Connors, he's still a hefty boy. That's a strong man. And Taichi Ishimori, also very, very strong man. Uh, any one of these guys could take it to Sonata. No problem. There's a reason why these two guys, IWGP Junior Champions. Yeah. Um, Sonata getting the Paradise Lock on Drilla at one point. But he doesn't leave it locked in as long as he used to. And it, you know, it kind of disappoints me. Yeah, he didn't cater to, like, he, he played to the crowd a little bit, but not too much. Maybe a few seconds, but mm-hmm. not like he used to. 
Um, Connors mm-hmm. and Drill are repeatedly taking Doki and Sonata out of the corner. Every time Taka's trying to tag out it in this match, I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he come, he, so he fights back, gets a just face lock on Connors, and then gets the trank, uh, like a head scissors on Drilla, both at the same time. And Ishimori has to make the save to break it up. I, I like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Worked very well together, these guys. Yeah, Doki hitting a nice tope suicida to Ishimori on the floor. And Sonata hits a plancha to Drilla and Connors at the same time. Uh, take, mm-hmm. Taking those two out. So Taka brings, uh, so Doki sends Ishimori back in to, with Taka. Taka hits a jumping kick to the head, goes for the Zack driver, but Ishimori reverses into the bloody cross for the win. Yeah, what a match. The tension that Ishimori and Doki are building in this match for their showdown is great. Oh, because Ishimori, yeah, Ishimori is not someone who's particularly overly expressive like his two counterparts in this one. But he does tend to play off of whoever he is paired up with. So we did see not a ton more expression in this one, but we did see some expression than when he, for example, is teaming with um, Chase and Kenta. Um, he was so barking. That, yeah, they were. They, they always do the barking now. It's very interesting. He barked with them, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and same with same with the next match too. We saw yeah. more barking. So before um, we, oh, go. Okay, I'm not. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't done yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, when when just five guys first came out, that stare down between doki and ishimori was just it was so good and what i love about this this whole thing is again as i mentioned ishimori not particularly animated half three to three two-thirds arguably of doki's face is covered and he still has more personality than sonata who's wearing significantly less than him overall (laughs) it's baffling but they were creating this tension they have this these other things that they do that create this subtle tension and gives yeah. them something the crowd something to kind of feed off of i'm excited for this i'm excited for this showdown and i wouldn't think i would because again as much as i love ishimori the lack of animation kind of makes him fall flat sometimes for me despite that incredible in-ring talent and doki sometimes he's not trying to be in front of everybody he's kind of hanging back he's being wallflower on purpose to try to give other people more attention Mm -hmm. that they are having this effortless confrontation without doing or saying anything has it was perfect for me yeah again i think these two teams like as much as they have faced off, it it, it it always seems fresh in the way they combo everything up. And mm-hmm. I also noticed when they came out, Doki came out first, and then Taka, and then Sonata last. But do- when they kind of st- all stood together in the entranceway, Doki in the center. Do we have a, a changing of the leader of just five guys? Is Doki going to be like pushing Sonata down, saying, I'm better than you? I have a title, you jerk. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't he the only one in the faction that has a title right now? Mm-hmm. It, it would. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it would make sense that he would be in, in front of everybody, kind of leading everybody to the ring in that because his his feud is going to be what's taking center stage right now above the other four guys yeah mm-hmm. yeah again i i just i had fun with this match again it was just Same. fun to see everybody flying around and just doing everything they do so well so mm-hmm. saw G I'm, excited that the, mm-hmm. I'm so excited that the war dogs are back i've been missing them heck yeah we move on. More war dogs. We got Bishamon and Hiroki, Hiroki Goto and Yoshiashi teaming up with Tomoaki Hanma, the king of the Kokeshi, uh, taking on the Bullet Club war dogs, David Finley, Gabe Kidd, and Jake Lee uh, with Gato. Uh, I do need to make this point. 
uh, in the shows on the road to de- destruction or whatever. Yeah, the road to destruction in Kobe. Um, Gabe Kidd and Jake Lee will be tagging in some matches. Do you, want, do you know what their tag name is? Let's take a guess. Okay, so hold on. This is going to take a little bit of deduction. Jake Lee is a smart bastard. Gabe Kidd is war ready. Smart war, smart ready, war ready. Not smart even. War. I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mad bastards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I would say so. Yeah. I Go on it. with your bad cells. I love it. Yoshi Hashi cutting his hair a little shorter, all blonded out and looking a little bit kind of like Han Han Meyer. He not quite as tan, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like the fresh look on him though. Yeah. I like the new do. It's something different. It's not this picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fresh, it's clean, it's nice. A uh, kid just a strikes he's throwing in this match. We're just in safety, just smacking everybody around in this match. Even the mm-hmm. hard head of, of of Hanma, he's smacking the crap out of his head. Um, yeah, just some great stuff here. Um, he hits this great hard forearm strike into the Jake Lee backdrop uh, for a two count. Let's just ooh, on Hanma, dude, that was great. It's a great little combo showing they're already like, they're already starting to build tag moves. Let's go. Uh hot mm-hmm. like rocket Kokeshi to Lee at one point. Um Bishamon double teaming Finley. They hit that Russian leg sweep headhunter combo. And Hanma comes in with a Kokeshi to Finley. Great little spot there. Uh go in this match. Goto fights off the double team into the Ushi Garoshi on Gabe Kid. And then the inverted GTR and the Goto a bomber. Uh Finley ends up reversing a suplex it to hit into oblivion. Uh sorry, trash panda into oblivion on Goto. Finley brawls with Yoshihashi. Hits into a obli- trash panda into oblivion on him. Uh Yoshihashi stops the power bomb, then stops. Another attempt, running Finley into the corner, and then hits him with the crucifix driver for the win. Yoshihashi pinning our global heavyweight champion, and Yoshi getting into the face of Finley after ma- the match, indicating he wants a shot at the global title. Next global champion, Yoshihashi. Bruh. Uh, you'd finally have a singles title. But not like this. Not like this. Uh, Finley has gone through enough with that title. We not no. No. With the whole Nick Nemeth thing, with the whole Tanahashi thing, no. Just as a fan, no. No. Are you... Are you Delulu and your Kaflulu there, sir? Come on, I, you want you want Yoshihashi to win his singles title before he has to retire. Come on. As much as I want a hole in the head. You you have one, two, three, four. You have five. A holes non-functional in hole in the head. <laughs> My goodness. Gay uh, kid not happy after the loss on this one, and understandable because mm-hmm. It was a little shocking for me because I'm not going to lie. When I looked at this team formation of War Dogs, I went, ooh, because look what they're facing. Yes, they're facing Bishimon. Yes, Bishimon is a strong, amazing tag team. But it's that joyous little bubbly Pokemon Pikachu thingy in the back there and Tomwaki Hamna that you just want to get back. That I was like, oh no, he's going to get destroyed by these guys. I wasn't expecting a Yoshihashi win on this. No. This shocked me. So, yeah, I mean, is it going to be a great match? Absolutely, because one on one matches, especially lately, Yoshihashi's been in perpetual G1 mode. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to see Finley lose this title yet. 
I feel like there's still a lot that he could do with it, not just in Japan, but on a global scale, based on the name of the title. Mm. To, you know, at that I don't feel that Yoshihashi is capable of reaching in the same way. Does that make Come sense? On. He's Yoshihashi. Yoshihashi is world. He's he's the he's the loose explosion of the world. Come on. The AEW crowd barely knew who Mina Shirakawa was when she showed up the first time. I don't think I don't know who Yoshihashi is. Buddy's favorite loose explosion. Come on. (laughs) You will never live that name down. It's as long as she wrestles. No. (laughs) Eight man tag action. Or no, ten man tag action. Sorry. Ten yeah, I was going to say, there's 10 there, there, isn't there? I thought I couldn't see Bolton. <laughs> oh, he's so the white. biggest man on the damn team. But he it's all white, he, though. Yeah, he, he, it's, he's, but he's so like... Look at Yeah, but... It looks like so his blonde. head is sticking out of a giant pile of goose feathers. It is. We have Bebop tag team Hiroshi Tanahashi and Toriyana with their six man tag partner Bolton Oleg teaming up with El Fantasmo and the shooter Shota Umino take with Giotto in their corner taking on House of Torture's Evil, Red Narita Show, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Yujiro Takahashi with Dick Togo in their corner. Both people. Um, Umino and ELP come out of the cr- through the crowd. Then Yana, El Presidente, and Bolton all join them coming through the crowd. Tana having a blast, just running up and down through the crowd, having a great time. Umino posing yeah. with some baby. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though, I cackled a little bit when Bolton walked in because it was nothing, and then just suddenly all I could see was the fur hat. I was just uh. like, "Who is that? Oh, it's Bolton!" Yes. I got the greatest the shot. I, I put a dead center of our last thumbnail. Him with the hat on, just going. Yes. Oh, yes. That. So That's good. A, my new favorite so picture good. of Bolton Oleg. <laughs> ELP is offered a House of Torture shirt by Evil. So he slides out of the ring and pretty much spends the, the match on the outside contemplating, conflicted. It was like, should he join House of Torture after the shenanigans? The shenanigans from uh, last the last night and him thinking uh, that Jado kind of screwed him and the house church is trying to mess with him. So he doesn't know what's going on quite, quite right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, house torture doing house torture things. They come in, they're gang beating everybody. They're doing things. Bolton comes in, takes out house of torture at one point. He gets that Bolton shake to Ren Narita as he goes to fight. Oh, Yujiro. Yujiro. Yeah. Oh, that Bolton shake looked great. Uh, Mutro yeah. fighting his hand, uh, but Bolton gets a drop kick to him. Uh, Tana is fighting with Evil for a bit. House of Torture all in, taking out Hauntai. Uh, ELP eventually makes the save, hits sudden death to Dick Togo, who got into this match. But Narita comes in, hits him from behind with the Never Open Way Championship, but then tosses it to Tanahashi. And uh, ELP thinks Tanahashi hit him with the title, and he's just. He owed. Uh, and then Togo hits Tana with a pedigree. Goes to, or is it, no, Togo, not Togo. What? Not Togo didn't hit the pedigree. Who hit the pedigree? Yeah, Togo hits the pedigree and hits a senton off the top. And Evil slides in to get the pin on, uh, uh, on, uh, somebody for the win. <laughs> and right who? Yeah. I was like Togo's done this match, but no, Togo came in and hit those last couple of moves for Evil. Wasn't it ELP? No, ELP was like just kind of standing there, cut like. Oh right, he cut. It was Tana. It was Tanahashi because oh, ELP Tana. could have made the save and he didn't. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah, but ELP just decided not to make the save. So ELP is given a chair by House Torture to hit him, but Jado coming in, it's like no. He's your friend. Don't do it. And then ELP drops a chair, hugs Jado. House Torture then jump them and beat them down. Narita hits Jado. Uh, and then ELP both with the push-up bar. Um, Evil calls him worthless. They pose all 
standing with a foot on ELP and then stomp them some more until the young lions come in to run them off. This was like, despite the shenanigans, minus the shenanigans, the story that was told in this match was actually really, really well done by both factions and all members involved. Show wasn't too stupid and over the top. Like, this was actually a very surprisingly palatable version of House of Torture, despite all the shenanigans. They've been taking some lessons from their superiors over a stardom in hate mm. and Christ. Um, yeah, I just got to also just randomly shout out Joe Shinobu Kanemaru looking freaking jerked. His arms were massive. And the trap separation was huge. He's looking huge. He's looking like Show. At one point, I was like, is that Show? Oh, no, that's Kanemaru. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, yeah, as I mentioned, it was odd. House of Torture did amazing in this match. I was super, super happy with how they, they performed. Like, despite getting a win, which I didn't think they deserved anyway, the, the story really did make this match and everything kind of worth all of it. Man, am I in ELP's corner now, though. Like, he has been doing some solid work this G1, and, and now going forward... You know, with this kind of, did his teammates attack him? Did they not? I love the the angle that it's creating. The only thing that I think could have made this segment better and what I thought that they were actually setting up for was someone to run in and save ELP. Like, besides the Young Lions, like, I thought this was going to be like a music hits. Oh, my God, this person's running in and obliterates House of Torture. And, oh, my God, ELP, yay. I felt like that was a, an opportunity kind of missed there because no one wants to hear from House of Torture because they don't have anything credible to be yippity yappity about. They don't have any gold. They don't have any titles. They lost everything. Mm -hmm. They kind of have to start bickety barking like their war dog buddies and maybe see if they can start to find themselves in more situations and opportunities for gold. Yeah, maybe they should start like mooing or oinking instead of and just maybe that could be their thing instead of barking and me sure <laughs> uh, imagine you Jiro, just walking in there um, or just like rolling on like oink 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 i laugh so hard and then wearing little pig noses on top of their we move on eight man tag matches. Lij's Bushi, Hiroma Takahashi. Oh, sorry, Bushi, Hiroma Takahashi, Shingo Takagi, and Tetsuya Naito. <laughs> Naito's Naito matches it all up. He does. It's like if they had switched Yoda Suji oh. and Naito, this would work better for you. But unfortunately, well, Suji would be better. Also Teton also screws it up too. I can go, but I but no, I just you, go. You do the E in the middle. Yeah, exactly. It's in the middle. Tessia Naito. The better Naito. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Tessia Nito. Nito. There's an I in there. First in the United Empires, Callum Newman, Great Okan, Hanare, and Jeff Cobb. <sighs> Uh, yes. Bushi trying to do stuff to Cobb at the start of this match, but just bouncing Hilarious. off of Cobb every time he did something it was so funny. I laughed so hard at that. Ah, uh, uh, so good. Um, <laughs> Cobb fighting with Naito, getting the Mongolians, uh, hits a straight right, sending Naito in the corner, and then sits on his head, just mm -hmm. being a dick. Uh, I love it. Um, Hiromo <laughs> taking it to Hanare, but Hanare's like kind of be kind of seems unfazed at first. Hits a headbutt, more strikes. Hanare drops him with a kick. Hiromo gets a Rana though, taking him down. Gets a seated drop kick. Uh, Hanare gets that berserker bomb for two. Bushi stops the Ultima, and this is where everybody's coming in, hitting a move to each other. So, like one person comes in, takes the other person on the move, and another person's gonna take all that crazy shit. And then Bushi hits the yeah. Bushi to everyone on the floor at the end of this match. Hanari uh, taking out Hiromu with strikes and kicks. Hits that native knee in the corner, but as he goes for what looked like a bulldog out of the corner, um, 
or sorry, he pulls him out of the corner, goes for streets of rage. But Hiromu cradles him into the, I'm going to call it the, 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 the and the answer said, there's no name for that pin. So it's now the Hiromu roll. And he gets the win. Pinning yeah. Hanare. So after the match, Hanare is like, not even, well, hold on, hold on. Not even just pinning Hanare. He held him even after the bell had rung, like, after the music had started. Uh, like, and he's kicking. He's Hanare is just trying to get out of it. Hiromu refused to let him go. He had him for probably at least a six or seven count. Yeah, like he that was more than what Big E was doing when he was doing his five count matches. When he was when yeah. he was in NXT, he was winning all his matches with the five count instead of the three count. And yeah, they, he was like had a six or seven count there. Yeah. He was he had him t- freaking pinned up there really good. I wonder if it was a size thing. Because again, Hiromu is a smaller guy in comparison to Hanare. We had noticed with with Shingo versus uh, Zack Sabre Jr., same thing. You know, it was a little harder for Zack Sabre Jr. to escape because he's a little bit more compact facing a smaller individual. I wonder if Hanari wasn't quite prepared for the stature of Hiromu Takahashi. He better get prepared because he's stunned at the match. And the announcer saying Hiromu is now the number one contender by pinning the champion in this, ten- in this eight-man tag. Uh, and he actually grabs the belt, and Hinari's pissed. And then Khan and Knights are having a stare down on the outside, and we're going to talk about what's coming out of that too. Uh, oh Jesus, I'm I'm excited for this fall for professional wrestling in Japan because it's going to be a lot. We're gonna, I think we're going to do just a combo show of all the main events from the from like the five nights. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's definitely yeah the animosity between Khan and Naito. After he didn't Naito throw his shirt, he threw a Khan shirt at him. I think so. Yeah, yeah they were in a stare yeah. down on the on the outside. It was a great little spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lots of stories told in this uh, the show. I love it. Yeah. Going on to the main event of the evening, Masahiro Chono, the original winner of the G1 Climax back in 19, I want to say 91. Yeah, 1991 was the first G1 Climax. He won that. Yeah, wow. 34. Because it's 2024. That, that, makes, that makes sense. That just happened in 91. So it's making the numbers make sense. The numbers line up. Good. I was uh, seven. I was four? Yeah, I was four. It wasn't even four yet because I wouldn't turn four until like the end of like till to August tenth. Yeah, I talked about my birthday again, but <laughs> but yeah, I got one more in. Um, damn, I don't even think the tur- I think that tournament took place. I, I was three when that tournament took place. I was three turning four Crazy. years old. It's nuts. Yeah. So he joins uh, Mister uh, T- Hiroshi Tenzan on the Japanese commentary team. For the main event, the G1 Climax 34 final, it is the front man, Zack Sabre Jr. with Kosei Fujita, Mikey Nichols, and Robbie Eagles all at ringside to take on Yo Tatsuji from LIJ. This was good. Uh, Suji using the power and size early on here. Um, mm-hmm. so trying to transition, working his G1. Uh, they did say Suji has wrestled an hour more than Saber in this G1, saying he's the marathon man of this tournament. But uh, to me, that just means you had to work so much harder than Zack Saber. I mean, Zack Saber Jr. is better than you because he could finish his matches faster in his seven and two record. He finished all of his ma- he finished his matches in faster time, which makes him better than Suji. I don't know if it makes him better but it certainly makes him quicker i don't know you know if we're not going to debate that topic on here about speed and time and continuum and stuff it's a hard (laughs) we'll we'll say that you know that's a hard hard fact to, to to debate against you know he if he can finish your matches off quicker just your matches, though. 
I love Saber's like gra- like on his name. It's a bunch of Japanese symbols, and then Junior at the end, and then the JR <laughs> with the period at the end. I was, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> There's some things that they don't have over there. I don't know if having like a junior senior kind of thing is a, is something that they're privy to over there. So there's no Yoda Suji Jun. He's not Yoda Suji Junior. No. Right. Well, because that would be that would wouldn't his brother also need to be Yoda Suji Junior? No, he could be. That would, that would that, seem very rude to name one of the boys after the father and not the other one. Oh, well, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've known. I've known multiple twins in my life where one named after their father and the other is not. <laughs> it would be weird if they both had the same name. <laughs> well, yeah, but also why make give the other one the trauma of having the same name as his father? I have the same name as my father. Well, my first name, anyways. So <laughs> we'll have to discuss this after. We're going to get into a philosophical conversation that will take us down a rabbit hole of not wrestling. Yeah. So Suji taking a page out of Hanare's book and using those liver shots in this match. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, he got a liver shot at one point. He gets a scoop slam and the salmon splash for two. Then goes Oops. right into the body scissors to work over the midsection and abdominal. And Saber has to like roll them into the ropes to get out of it because those he had the the body scissors on tight. What um, was the the muscles that they were bothering? The abdominal. No, no. Chris Car- Charlton kept saying it over the the G one. What was it? I don't want to say the wrong thing and sound like an idiot, but he was saying it because Callum said it. He said it to Callum, and he's like, "The what?" Walker Stewart. Sorry, Walker Stewart was saying it. I don't meta something abdominal wall. I don't know meta, meta something. I don't know. It was a rib cage issue. Okay, um, <laughs> sure. Uh, if you know what they're talking about, put it in. If you know what she's talking about, put it in the comments. <laughs> I know. I heard it at a carpal. Maybe that's the word. That, that's what I was thinking it was, but I didn't want to say the wrong thing because I'm like carpal. Me. No, I don't the MCL, know. DMCL metacarpal See? ligament. That's your near knee. I didn't want to say it because I didn't know. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, then there, maybe you it anyway. So they're smashing into each other at one point with lariats, and they're not. And Saber is not dropping. Suji hits a super kick, kick and a lariat for two. Suji then hits a, another lariat and then hits the Falcon Arrow Driver for two. Then follows up with a beautiful curb stomp. Um, Saber pulling a flying arm, and I'm just jumping through spots. I'm nothing is in order here. Saber pulls a flying arm bar out of nowhere, gets that arm straight, but Suji has to scramble and get the foot on the rope so not have so his arm doesn't get too damaged. Uh, there's a spot where they're trading strikes at center. Saber's unloading European uppercuts, but Suji hits that liver punch and hits a the 17 crosses. Uh, which is his uh, a slant of this move he does, and he gets a two count. Uh, he follows it with a curb stop, then hits a Marlow crash. But Saber barely, barely kicks out a two point nine. Josh barely. He ends up cat, and then so Suji goes for a gene blaster. He ends up catching the arm. Uh, into a Fujiwara armbar, then into the triangle. But Suji lifts and slams him, hits the knee to the face, and then a running knee. But he can only get two. Uh, Saber recovers, starts unloading slash, but Suji hits a headbutt. He gets him on his shoulders, climbs to the top, and hits a super 17 crosses, but it can only get two again. Uh, Saber stopping the dead bull, unloading strikes, goes for Zack Driver, but Suji slips and hits a Zack Driver of his own, which they which they incorrectly called a Suji Driver. No, it's called a Zack Driver, sir. They're Mr. Walker Stewart. It's a Zack Driver. What did we discuss about this earlier in the summer, sir? About it's moves being done by people, by individuals. When the originator Unless is the person Zach Driver. wants it called... The Callum wants it called the, called the Oz Cutter. Other people don't want it called the, the, the Cutter. Some people want it called an RKO. You know, we call Dalton Rogue's Cutter the Rogue Cutter. 
If he wants to have it be his thing, it's his thing. Let him do his thing. No. Yeah, don't Taka, be Taka, rena Taka renamed it the Zack Driver. It's a Zack Driver. He was the man that created the move. That is the man that, that, that defaults to everything. <laughs> I will argue that point. I will argue that move forever. Any other move, I don't care. <laughs> Okie dokie. Dude, I call the exact same. Intercostals, thing. by the way. Inter, oh, it, not meta. Intercostal. I had the costal part right. Doofy. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. Intercostal, sure. I don't know what it is. Uh, the intercostal gene muscles are the rib muscles, dude. The muscles in between your ribs that keep you breathing properly. I didn't know I had muscles in between my ribs. I just assumed it was ribs around my lungs or something. I don't know. <laughs> And I thought there was like muscles on top, like man boobies. They're they're that's muscle technically with a bunch of fat on top. So <laughs> I don't know anything about my body. Okay, <laughs> the, the gene blaster gets sidestepped into the Euro Clash, or if you want to call it an O'Connor roll, it's the same thing. Uh, but he only gets two, and then he gets a figure. Saber gets a figure four pin for two. Then he hits a PK. He goes for the Zack Driver. It's reversed into a stunner. Saber pulls a triangle off of the Gene Blaster, starts tying up the arms and his legs, then gets up, then crosses the legs, pulls back, takes one of his legs with the other two, one of them's holding both arms, hooks his leg around Suji's legs. Suji cannot move. He cannot go anywhere. And he is forced to submit to your winner of the G1, my pick, Zach Stava Jr. And what a story they told with that whole thing. It's nice, though, that both of us get bragging rights, that both of our favorites have won major tournaments in this company this year. And and I love Charlton. It's come home. It's come yeah. home. He, he sell, that's what he's been saying every show he's been on. It's coming home to England. Like it's mm -hmm. coming. But he, he's just y'all. It's coming home. It was like yeah. <laughs> so good. What a fun moment. What a oh, great yeah. moment for these guys. And there was that nice little show of respect afterwards. They had had their little nod. Zack Saber Jr. clapping for Suji as he exited. It was a nice little little thing. And this was another one I didn't take any note because I knew you would take the notes. <laughs> but also, I just wanted to watch and enjoy this one. Mm, I watched this twice. I mean, I and that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I watched it to watch it, and then I watched it to take notes. So I took a it's bunch fair. of notes because I knew a lot of what was coming as the match was going. I'm like, oh, yeah, this happened mm -hmm. here. And this happened. So I took a lot of notes, and then I just selected out stuff. I really want to talk about. There were some great spots that I didn't get to talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, this match was insane, and it was very long. Thirty. Very long. I got the time here. Thirty-one minutes, three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we know what the last three seconds were. One, two, <laughs> three. No, it wasn't even a one, two, three. It was I give up. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Japanese. What? Whatever it is, probably still yes, mm -hmm. or the head nod because the head nod was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy. Oh, dude, this was such a good such match. a sweet celebration after too. Oh, so yeah, I've got info for that. So he, he he's go. celebrating. His boys are in there. His boys all come in to celebrate with them. He gets the mic. He says. He says some thank yous to people, and he does pretty much. He does all of it in Japanese, except for except for, I fucking did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair, you know, fair. That, and then he proceeds to say, ja January fourth is very far away, and I fell in love with Ryo Goku. And the next time we're here is Camp Pro Wrestling, and I'm challenging for the championship in Ryo Goku at King of Pro Wrestling. Yeah, he's not waiting. He's not waiting till January. He's gonna roll into January as champion, baby. He's going into Wrestle Kingdom as champion because 
everything. But he celebrates, and he's it's celebrating with the boys in the ring. He gets the he gets the trophy, and he goes into the crowd, celebrating with the people that have embraced him. He loves it. The crowd loves it. So good, mm-hmm. so good. And then in backstage comments, he said he confirmed, "I am challenging for the title at King of Pro Wrestling on October fourteenth." Uh, but then he said and said, "Once I win." He will have his first. He will defend the title for his first time six days later at Royal Quest Four in England. I mean, now he has to win because now I want to see that. Because then, who's he going to face in Royal Quest? Hello, yes, please. Maybe, and maybe like the title rematch comes like six days later, or when, mean, or maybe Naito. <laughs> I would personally like to see what uh, what the UK has to offer at that point. If he's going Michael over there, it's sure. I don't know who that is. I know, I know oh. that name. We saw him last time, didn't we? Yeah, he's the Rev Pro. He's the current Rev Pro champion. Is he the guy who faced Osprey last time? He has faced Osprey multiple times on Rev Pro shows. Um, he was actually, I think, he was Osprey's final indie date before he went to AEW because he worked he he wrapped up with New Japan, went to England, did Rev Pro, and then went to AEW. I know I know the name. I know yeah. I know the name and I know I've seen him. I oh, just you, gotta make the connection. You see him on there. He was he's been he was on he was on the he was on the last couple of Royal Quest shows. Oh yeah, you've seen him. You you've seen him. Yeah. So maybe I'd like to see like as as cool as it would be to see a rematch there. I'd like to see what uh, what the UK has to offer. I mean, it says his home anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Better to to take on that crowd. Be great. Drill him alone. I <laughs> mean, I just want to see that in general because I want to see Drilla. Well, Drilla is going to be there because they've already they're already advertising him and Gabe Kid for a meet and greet uh, the day before. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Oh, so he will I'm be there. I'm excited about that. You know yeah. what I was disappointed with, though, that we didn't see Drilla and Connors on Forbidden Door. Mm. They certainly were wanting to be. Mm-hmm. They were talking about I it. I guess if we, we send our champions over there, they'd kind of be obligated to let them win, though, wouldn't they? The Debbie doesn't like to lose. Come on. I know. That's probably why they weren't over there. So quickly, we're going to talk about the fall. Uh, what is coming up for New Japan? Because this, the next day, they announced a bunch of stuff on Monday the 19th. Um, a bunch of stuff early in the morning for us, but later in the day for them. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to go in order. I'm going to go with the biggest thing first here. Oh, oh sorry. That's the biggest thing okay. right there. <laughs> yeah, you're celebrating. That wasn't what I Yay. meant. I apologize. Um, <laughs> This right here, Destruction in Kobe, September 29th. The Great Okan is getting a shot at Tetsuya Naito for the World Championship. Let's go. I'm ready to see this match. They had a great, great match in the G1 for Khan to agree into the semifinals. I will, I can't wait to see them go again. And then they announced. Officially, that it will be the Officially. winner of that match versus Saber on October fourteenth, King of Pro Wrestling twenty twenty four. We we knew that we talked about that already. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, that's huge. And then again, he said Royal Quest four. He will defend the title there if he wins on the fourteenth, or said when he wins on the fourteenth is what Saber said. But yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm very much looking forward to watching Royal Quest because those shows every year have been really good. Getting to see a lot mm-hmm. of good great. Talent mixed in with the New Japan guys, very I very much enjoy that. Oh, very, very much so. Yes, yeah. yeah. I wasn't that where we saw the first kind of tournament matches, round robin matches for the IWGP Women's Championship, where we were introduced yeah. to Jesse Gabbert was there. Hmm. Yeah. Super yeah. cool. I remember seeing FTR versus Aussie Open for the first time on a Royal Quest show, which was an amazing match. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So oh, we're going to talk about the rest of the Destruction Tour this September on the 7th. 
We have the Shingo Takagi, Takagi anniversary show. I have two matches to talk about here. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, we have. I forgot to write. I forgot to write this information down. Give me one second. Bap, 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 bap. We have a new member of the United Empire. Ooh, mm -hmm. Ooh right now. It's a big. It's big. <laughs> we have. We have TMDK's Save, Zack Sabre Jr. and Kosei Fujita taking on the United Empire's Great Ocon and Jacob Austin Young. Uh, from uh, the United States, he will be joining the United Empire as their new member. So uh, even though and he he's 30 or 31 years old, I want to say. So, yeah. Hmm. I was going to say, he kind of almost looked like... Um... I can't remember the the bearded one on FTR. Not the bald one. That's Dax. Dawson. There you I go. Know. Looks Whatever like the hell his name. Dash. Dash. Dawson was. There you name. go. Dash. Dash. Yeah, Dash. He looks like kinda. he looks kind of like him. It gives me him vibes. If he's as good as him, I'm, I'm, I'll be very very happy. Yeah. And then uh, also on that show, in the main event of the Shingo Takagi 20th anniversary show, will be Shingo Takagi. Yes, you're right. I did say it. Shingo Takagi and Bushi teaming up with to be announced to face off against Tetsuya Naito, Yoda Suji, and Hiromu Takahashi. Hmm. Yeah. Because Teton's not listed for any of the tour. Because you think no. Teton would be the, the other guy, right? Because he's the other member of LIJ. So from that, we can be assured that it's not a member of CMLL then. I have a feeling it's going to be somebody from DDT. Or not DDT, Dragon Gate. Because that's where Shingo was for majority of his Originally, career. Yeah. So, and there is a Dragon Gate young guy in uh, the opener. Uh, teaming up with one of the young lions, so I feel right, right. yes, I did see that. Yeah, so I feel like there's going to be another Dragon Gate person to come in here to team with Bushi and Chingo. I I just don't know. We don't know who it is, but you know who I'd love. Oh no, never mind. That's the wrong organization. Never mind. You're thinking you're 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 thinking Japanese Caillou from DDT, aren't you? <laughs> no, I was gonna say we were. Oh, yeah, he's a Noah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that poor man. Uh, and then on the eighth World Television Championship time, it is Yoda yeah. Suji challenging Jeff Cobb. Let's go. This is going to be great. Great. Yeah. I was going to say, go on over there, Tony. What's uh, your name? And then. <laughs> And then on the ninth, we are getting for the never open weight championship. It is yes. Hinata defending against Hiromu Takahashi. Yeah, let's go. This match is going to be killer. And yes. then on the eleventh in Sendai, we've got the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Doki taking on Taiji Ishimori. Let's go! Yes. I'm so excited yeah. for this one. Yes. Doki chokey, doki chokey, doki chokey. Mm -hmm. There'll be a few. Doki chokey, Andre. Maybe they'll bring him over for the match. Maybe they'll fly him in just for this one match. Bring Gino. Have in. you seen how Gino is looking lately? Jacked. Jack Gino. Jack Gino. And then on the 14th, never open weight six man championship match it is team el presidente hiroshi tanahashi toriano and bolton Ole taking on house of tortures evil yujiro takahashi and dick togo mm -hmm. yeah. what you have such okay i Maybe I, I need to retract something I said earlier. I, I said all the members of House of Torture are great independently. Some are better than others. 
And this is definitely not what I would consider the strongest combination of these members. I'm very sorry. I would say this is the weakest. The only dominant force you have in there is evil. Dick is a great wingman. I feel like he's kind of like a manager who should probably take a more Gato role as opposed to being put in these positions. I, I don't feel that, it, like, if you want to actually have a great match, I feel that this should be evil Kanemaru and Ren Narita. You want to have a great say. match. Or yeah, you can flip this Kanemaru is going to be for, weird. Uh, I think you can flip Kanemaru for show if you want, because that's... I think no, those no, 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 no. No? I want to see show go back after that junior title now. I don't want to see him win it. I want to see him go after it, though. Yeah. I know you don't like Show, but he's oh, a great wrestler. Oh, I love Show. Wrestler. I think he's great. I just don't like the current character of Show. No, I don't either. But let's hope that based on the, we'll say, tameness that we saw of his re-debut, his coming back, if you will, that 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 means that he's going to be that little bit tamer. That show. I mean, just. Oh, okay. I'm like, what? What you doing over there, Crouching that's Tiger? That's my impression of show. He's he's excessive. He's over the top. You know, you tell him give give you ten, he gives you one hundred. And in some situations, that can be good, but in his situation, it is not. No, I I would like to see him do other things right now. I I would think that if you wanted to have a solid match against someone like Yano, like Bolton, you would you would put in Narita Catavaro. Hmm? That's weird. I I'm I'm it's gonna be a pass for me. And then your semi main event for uh destruction in Kobe on September 29th. It is a loose explosion. Take it, <laughs> Yoshihashi taking on your global heavyweight champion, David Finley. Okay. New Japan, can we discuss your graphics? My guys. Okay, first of all, David Finley looks like my paralysis demon. Mm-hmm. Just screaming out of my closet in the middle of the night. Which, you know, if that's the vibe we're going for, that ultimate evil, I mean, go on. Works. Yoshihashi looking like you freaking caught him off guard in the bathroom. Like. Like he's literally standing there taking a piss. And he just looked over like, what are you doing? And realizes you have your camera out. And he raised his eyebrow. You're like, what? I'm the I'm the rock. He's raising an eyebrow. He's the rock. He, oh, he's the loose, he is the loose rock. You know that this is going to be a banger match, though, especially if we get that G1 Yoshihashi, who's been G1-ing since 2022. Mm-hmm. Hope that's the case. Yeah. I do also hope that Fenley retains, though. Uh, Yoshihashi getting his first singles title ever. No. Yeah. No, no one needs to see that. We don't need to see that. We, we need to see his deserve. eyebrows is what we, we need to see. We all deserve to see Yoshihashi hoist that Global Heavyweight Championship. We did. Yesterday. No, no, no. That's good uh, enough. Officially. as, the, as No, the no, no, no. You said what you said. <laughs> He's going to win. I'm calling it right now. I called Saber. Mm-hmm. I'm calling Yoshihashi. No, no. Call. You get one a year, my guy. One a year. You got your big win. You're good. Nope. No. Yoshihashi, Yoshihashi for global champion. Let's go. No. Yep. God's yep. no. <laughs> uh, well, we have no. come to the end. We have come to the end of another episode of NDPW Puro Resso. You can... <laughs> No, it's all, it's all, oh, oh god Hammer started like freezing oh I shouldn't do that no you shouldn't <laughs> I, I, I was just making sounds and then I see her camera start freezing that means mine's probably freezing to her uh oh that's not good 
And you can find me on the X at that Canada Guy TikTok, Instagram and threads at that Canada Dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Mel Wrestling Talk and our YouTube page, YouTube.com slash at Andre Mel Wrestling Talk. You can also find us in audio form, A Plus Productions. Go check out the Facebook page. You can find the links from there to get into our audio feeds, get them into your podcast catcher of choice, and listen up to everything we've got going, everything that the Steve Swiss dropping, everything Boris is dropping, everything Matt is dropping. There'll be lots of great content. There's a wrestling feed, then there'll be a sports feed, and there will be an entertainment feed. Check all of it out. I want to say thank you to our partners over at our local establishment for being so supportive of us and being our friends. Thank you so much. Uh, you can check out Melba's uh, interview with Mark Talks this past weekend where she got to, had to talk all about herself. And, uh, and you can find mine uh, the week from the Monday before. And you can find Ashers from the Saturday before that. Uh, so lots and lots and lots of stuff. Uh, Mark, and Mark has another one. This coming Saturday, it all comes to a head as the the uh, immovable object, old Ed, takes on the, um, the, inc- the incredible force of Mark Talks Wrestling as they face off one-on-one interview style who will come up victorious? Who will be the dominant force in this match? I'm trying. I'm trying to sell it, man. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so check all that out this sa- check all that this Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern time on our local establishment. You can also find us at Backbreaker Video. These guys are right here. Uh, YouTube.com slash at uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. My brain froze there. Uh, where you can find all of our stuff that Mike Simulcast posts. A lot of other great wrestling stuff over there, including Asher Bizarro's content is also simulcasted over there. You can also find uh, Mike's AEW Watch Alongs, which you can watch live every Wednesday, Saturday, and Pay Per View Sunday, where he's watching all the AEW content. Watch him this coming Sunday, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. You can find him hanging out, watching all in from begin from zero hour beginning all the way to the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> and lots of there. Uh, so check that out. And if you want to see his gaming content, he plays there all the rest of the week. And you can see replays of that over at YouTube.com/slash at Backbreaker underscore Game, where you find content from him, Mr. PJ. See this little dude right here as I point to him on my wall, Rick Jules, and there for weekend cast. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. Yes, we do. Melball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a question for you. What's that? Where can they find you? At home, minding my business. Oh, so you want me to put your address in the in the in the, no. in the information envelope? So if you're want... wanting to follow a Melville, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melville. You can follow her on everything else: Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy over here every Friday at eight p.m. Mountain Time, unless it's not, and then we'll let you know on social media. But we will be doing our episode live this week. We have no wrestling going in Edmonton. So we will be doing that for you, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. You can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Like I was saying it there. You okay there? He's frozen. That's okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, we have an episode hopefully coming up very, very soon. Astrid is in the middle of her crossover for her promotion at work for her shoot job. So we have well, we've been not trying to stress her out. We've been trying to not stress her out lately. So we will let you know when we have an episode coming out. If you're wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is njpwworld.com. It is 1250 yen. Yeah? 1250 yen or approximately 10 Canadian. It's not 10 Canadian. It's more like 1450, according to this guy. I just like Sean Spears. You can say 10 American because it is 10 American. But he's Canadian and we're Canadian. (laughs) Oh, hello, Eddie. Whoa. 
that was like a triforce of like we're not going to say that word um <clears throat> ntbwworld.com i'll try my trusted friend and colleague oh god why <laughs> why would you do that because i wanted you to suffer <laughs> you're so mean so mean why The ghost of Yoshihashi lives. My no longer trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Uh, I just want to say thank you. If you're listening on A Plus Production, thank you so much. Uh, check out the Facebook page. Uh, subscribe in your uh, podcast feed of podcast catcher of choice. We really do appreciate three different feeds, wrestling, sports, and entertainment. Also, if you're watching on our YouTube pages, whether it's on your mobile wrestling talk or back break video, thank you so very, very much. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. Don't forget to share us out. Tell your friends, family. And uh, people who have red water bottles. Yeah. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Yeah, no, I'm not opening the door. No, no. It's a little dark. I'm late. I'm late. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. trust it out there. Holy shit, it is dark now. It is dark, yeah. That being said, I am your Malba. Over there is sound right. We will see you next time. Adios.